and this is different. You know, I'm still going to be here. If I'm a thorn in the flesh to you, just remember I'm still going to be here. <laughs> if, if you like me, I'm still going to be here. You don't like me. Fourth thing I learned. 
word is we have a small church mentality. We don't understand multiple staff church budgets and outreach attitude of our attitude sometimes is they know we're here, they're coming, they want to. We've got to go into the fields that are wide and ready for harvest. We've got to look for every person that comes in our door, if we're running a business or uh, wherever we are, and ask them, do you go to church? Hey, right, we got a great church, a lot of good things going on. Why don't you come? I'll meet you. I'll sit with you. The other thing I learned is our children's ministry is improving. Appreciate Eva's leadership. But we must upgrade our Sunday school teaching methods to use today's action, participation, and, and learning. We need to upgrade a lot of things that, that we've always done it this way. And we don't say that anymore because we've been beat over the head with it all these years. The pastor's doing that. But we need to really prepare to reach people. And that we've got the building in good shape, ready to reach people. Sixth thing I've learned that we haven't fully grasped God's blueprint for our church. We develop a vision statement, a vision statement, and it's a good vision statement. We'll talk to you about it in just a minute. But we haven't made it any, set any goals for the deacons, set any goals for Sunday school classes, set any goals for, uh, for whatever organization, WMU, whatever else. We set some, but it, it sometimes it's this, this, they're not together. We have a beautiful church facility that is efficient, beautiful, and ready to be filled. We just need people to go into the fields and white and ready for harvest. We have a beautiful prayer room that needs prayer warriors to bathe everything we do in prayer. Ninth thing, some will never see the hand of God do God things because they can't trust God that much. They're not putting it first. The tenth thing is, God has a purpose and plan for our church. All of us are going to decide what kind of church we're going to be. You decide without saying anything. You decide without not doing anything. And the church would be what you want it to be. The first statement in our vision statement is, exalt Jesus Christ as Lord. The scripture says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Exalt the Lord our God and worship his foot at his footstool, for he is holy. It says in the, in the Philippians 2 9, therefore God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. And one of these days, everybody that ever lived is going to face Jesus Christ and say, Jesus Christ is truly the Lord. And go on to damnation or to salvation, to hope, based on what we do now. The fact that whether we trusted Jesus Christ or we did not, what we do in the works. I think we all glory in something. In something. We either glory in God and our relationship to Him, or we glory in our children, or we glory in our grandchildren, or we glory in many other things. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. You know something? Not a one of us here loves God as much as He loves us. You know, we can grow in our love for one another. We can grow in our love for Him. And if we love God, we're going to obey Him. We need to exalt Jesus Christ as Lord. The second thing is equip our members to serve. The scriptures that Denise read talked about this, the many places of service. And spiritual leaders and members of the body have different assignments. You know, all of you can be preachers. Can you imagine if one of us had to preach? I've gone to some places where there could be five preachers and they all preach. Some way or another. Would you like to say a few words? And that turned into about 30 minutes, a few words. I, 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 you know, all of us can't be pastors. All of us can't be other staff positions. We're all gifted, though, to build this body up. And you know what happens? If we're not serving, we're not training and learning and growing, then we really are hurting the body. If the kidney stop function, what's going to happen? Anybody had a kidney stone? Anybody had a kidney stone? It's not very painful, is it? Somebody said, it's like having a baby. I don't know how painful that is either. But you know, we have gifts to use in God's kingdom. You can't call a staff that can do all the work. I guess you could if everybody, everybody went to work. Staff could 
are really playing coaches. But equip our members to serve. We're completing an assignment to help the body to suffer and to help people in the world who need hope. We need to teach the word, allow the word to, uh, to really uh, penetrate our hearts and our minds and our lives. We can't just say we're people in the book. We have to be using what we know to grow and to, to be what God wants us to be. We equip our members to, to serve living by God's word, being obedient, by modeling what God wants us to do and how God wants us to live and accountability to one another. There's not enough accountability sometimes. We are afraid we may hurt somebody's feelings or afraid that uh, they might quit coming to church or sometimes we'll say, well, don't go to them and witness to them because you make them mad. So what? I'd rather be mad and going to heaven or mad that, that I came. The fact that I went and you went, at least they heard the word. Finances, you've got a generous church. You've taken on a big, big enterprise of almost $3.6 million. We owe about $3.5 million. I mean $1.5 million. We paid half of it. We paid approximately half of it all. I don't know, we had 50000 come in like that. Christ Christmas gift came in and went to the, the $4,000, $400,000 day. So I don't know where that is, but it's probably, hopefully it's under $300,000 anyway. But you know, there's nothing that God has called us to do that we can't do. Some of the things we've done, <clears throat> we had prayer seminars, we had Parents of God weekends, we had Purpose Driven Church, we had the community. Uh, 40 days of purpose, and we've had all kinds of things to, to help us to train, to be prepared. Sometimes we'll have a training event for the convention or somebody else, and Andy got a, a, a big group of excellent leaders to come. And some people said, Well, I've been teaching for a long time, I, uh, I don't need help. Well, we do need help because we can't use today, today like yesterday's methods to do what we need to do today. If that's true, how many of you farming still use horses and mules? A better tractor comes by, a better combine comes by, a better car comes by. Uh, we talk about getting education and getting education and getting education. And Dr. Cook can tell you that if he doesn't keep reading and studying and everything, he'll get behind in just a few months. And we get by, in about a year, we'll get behind uh, what we studied in, in college, what we studied in. But Jesus said, I am among you as one who serves. One of the greatest, one of the most difficult things happening in the world in the last few years, in our convention, it's been happening for a lot of years, is we've, we've gone to a CEO model of leadership. I was president and CEO of the Southern Baptist Convention. Oh, Lord. We need to be the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. The servant model is the model Jesus gave us, and he's our Lord. He's the one that gives us. The servant model is one who, who, who is willing to minister to anyone and reach out in love. I ran across this this week. Email to me. Irritating sayings. Save the wells, collect the whole set. Day without sunshine is like night. The other hand, you have different figures. 42.7% of all statistics are made up on the spot. 900% of... Uh, I wonder how much deeper the ocean would be without sponges. This is supposed to be funny, though. <laughs> if Barbie is so popular, why do you have to buy her friends? Quantum mechanics. Dream stuff of made is made up. Experiencing is, experience is something you don't give until after you've needed it. For every action, there's an equal and, and opposite criticism. Bills travel through the mail at twice the speed of the check. Well, I can go on, but I'm not going to. You don't, don't like that. <laughs> We've started tutoring in ESL, English as a second language, mission giving, and going. We've gone and 
the budgets did best years that we went on mission trips. I think that speaks. Hispanic mission, we started that. We have weekday ministries in good health right now due to Andy and Michelle and, and all the leadership and committee, ministry team that deals with that. And inner city missions, we are involved in that. Upper basketball, disaster relief. We have a disaster relief team developing and our whole church can be involved. We give more than $20,000 a year to benevolence. Using children's ministry is growing. We need to let God lead us as we have, but even more in the days ahead. We need to make everything in prayer and equip each other to serve. Third point is evangelize Christian County and beyond. Christian County has a population of a little over 70,000. It's not growing that much. In fact, Hopkins Hill is a little bit, or it's right on the border. But my understanding of what I've been told is right, 57%, or a little more than 57% of the population of this county don't go to church anymore. I dare say that when you leave to come to church, you count enough people to fill this building on the way to church. There's not a church on Sunday morning. What we need is not a new philosophy, but a new heart. We don't need to get a new, new this or new that. Or new. We need a new heart. A heart that is burdened for people. No matter where they are, where they live, no matter where they're from, no matter the color of their skin, no matter what vocation they have, we need to go out to the hurting people in this community. And every one of you, if I could sit down with you just a few minutes, could tell me some hurting areas, painful areas in your life, things that you struggle with. We'd be sensitive to that. Henry Blackman said, you cannot be in a relationship with Jesus and not be on mission with him. God has given us the privilege to urge everyone to come to His favor and be reconciled to Him. I don't know where the future goes. I'm not going to bet on anything. But I say, UK hasn't shown up yet. And basketball. I'm not going to the game next. What's it next Monday or Sunday? Football. I like football. I love football. I like basketball. I like all the other sports. I don't do very well at them anymore. I'm a little shaky in all those areas. That's a fun one. <laughs> Do you know something? My relationship with Jesus Christ is what keeps me going. And if it weren't for Him and His encouragement to me through you, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. I don't know where I'd be. But it's friends like you that I love every one of you. And I've tried to do that. I don't, I don't think I've had played favorites with anybody. I love all of them. You love me back, and I appreciate that. But let's love more. Let's care more for one another. And let's care more for one too for out there. People that really don't know that God loves them. People that really don't understand that how God can love them. We, we really need to think about how we can let God lead us and guide us. In Hebrews chapter 10, he tells us, let us draw near, let us hold fast. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. That's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. What about you? Are you sitting on the premises or standing on the promises? 
Are you really listening to what God wants you to do? Or are you just going through the motions? Are you willing to give your heart to Christ today? Come and I'll pray with you. Lead you through the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation is basically believing Jesus Christ was God's Son. And He died for our sins. And I'm a sinner and I need my sins forgiven. No way to get forgiven is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we pray and invite Him into your heart. You believe in it. You never personally invited me again. That's the way I was as a child when I was poor and saved. I thought when the invitation was given, I should go forward. I didn't know why. It didn't dawn on me. I believe that I never personally said, Lord Jesus, forgive me, come into my heart. And live in my heart. Now. Maybe you need to join the church, be baptized. Next Sunday, we're going to have a baptismal service. Whatever God's leading you to do, whatever He's saying to you right now, it's good as we stand and say.